On this episode of Geek Dad Life, we're going to review the new Masters of the Universe Origins Man-at-Arms figure by Mattel. and welcome to Geek Dad Life. It's your host, Jay Glaffelter here. The Masters of the Universe Origins line is starting to officially hit retail in the U.S. at Walmart. And one of our commenters even said, if you order through Amazon in the U.K., those orders are shipping as well. It's an exciting time for any He-Man and the Masters of the Universe fan, with Motu action figures hitting mass retail for the first time since the early 2000s. We have already reviewed the He-Man, Skeletor, Tila, Beastman, and Battle Cat figures on this channel, and have more reviews to come, so be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and click on that bell icon to be notified when the latest episode of Geek Dad Life drops. Today we are reviewing the heroic Master of Weapons, Man at Arms. He's an original 8 back figure that was featured heavily in the early mini comics and while his backstory was much more vague than later iterations of the he-man lore it did introduce us to his iconic yellow and green color scheme with his handy mace at his side one thing that wasn't there though was what is now considered his iconic mustache that came later with the filmations cartoon now this figure has a bit of both it looks very much like the vintage figure but unlike the vintage figure, it actually has a mustache, a sculpted molded mustache to evoke the feeling of the Filmation's cartoon. Looking at the packaging in the front, we're getting more of the same with the Burst Masters of the Universe logo with a new fur 20 in the top left hand, six plus in the right, and the modern posing retro play Burst right above the bubble. On the back, we have some fantastic artwork featuring man-at-arms shooting a laser off into the distance and has a little blurb stating weapons, master, and royal advisor. Man-at-arms assists He-Man in the battle against evil. Now, the card back, this little blurb, has no mention of his widely considered name, Duncan, uh, which was first introduced in the Filmation series and in later iterations of the lore. Uh, this one has no mention of that. I can assume we're going to consider that his name is Duncan, even though we haven't gotten that in any of the card art or the mini comic that has been packaged with the figures. The back of the card also features cross-sell artwork for the first six figures of this wave, as well as two little blocks that show that you can fit his mace into his hand, as well as twist him into powerful battle positions. Out of the box, the figure stands with the same height as the He-Man figure, given that it's using the same tooling, but the smaller head sculpt does put it a smidge shorter than the He-Man figure. Man-at-Arms has the same 16 points of articulation as the other figures in this line. Everything seems to work as it should, even though my head on this one is a little bit looser than the other figures. Not super loose to where it won't even hold a position, but it definitely is looser. Uh, but the mileage definitely will vary from figure to figure. Looking closer at the sculpting, there isn't much different from the He-Man figure aside from the different head. The head sculpt looks pretty good. It's very similar to the vintage Man-at-Arms figure aside from the added mustache. I think the mustache works on this figure. It doesn't seem out of place. It seems like it's fitting and it's right when it's there. And say if you want it to look more like the vintage counterpart, you can kind of tuck his head underneath the face shield uh, to make him look more like he looked in the first mini comics. The paint is where this figure falls short for me. Not that there's paint issues or paint slop, but just a lack thereof. The paint applications match the vintage figure almost exactly, but it does leave a bit more to be desired. There is no paint on his little cufflinks. That would have been a nice add. Uh, there's also no red dot on his belt or above his loincloth. And then also been kind of cool to have some of the little red dots on his helmet. I understand that reducing paint applications helps to reduce the cost of the figure but when you're comparing him to the he-man figure that has painted cuffs as well as little uh, painted fur on his boots it would have been nice to make just a little bit more paint applications to really set this figure apart Looking closer at Man-at-Arms accessories, you get exactly what you got with the vintage figure with some slight variations. The main coming from his arm armature, uh, instead of it being one piece that attaches over the length of the arm, it's two separate pieces to accommodate for the added articulation compared to the vintage figure. Now this really follows the classics up mold as well with the ability to kind of hinge underneath and move it up and down. It's not the most perfect uh, movement there, but Man-at-Arms 
accessories are molded in the same way that the Beastman and Tila accessories have been molded. So it's very rubbery. So I do think it's been able to handle the test of time being posed in different ways. Uh, so I do really like what they did here with the accessories. Now the details are very similar. We don't have too much added detail here compared to the vintage counterparts. Uh, the mace is slightly bigger than the vintage one, much like the other accessories, but not that much bigger. It was kind of neat how in the classics figure they really match it to the mini comics being a much bigger and more menacing mace. Uh, but this one fits in well with its vintage counterpart, which is what most of the line has been doing. Now it looks like a lot of the sculpting and paint detail that I feel is lacking with this man at arms figure is going to show up in the PowerCon 2020 exclusive prototype set that they're releasing that has not only a mini comics and prototype style man at arms, but also a very mini comics accurate merman, as well as he man, uh, a prototype accurate beast man, as well as a prototype accurate skeletor. Out of that set, I'm most excited about the merman and man at arms. So I'll have to wait till that pre-order arrives at my doorstep to truly see how great this man at arms figure could be. Going side by side with a vintage man at arms, it's easy to see where this one gets its influence from. It looks really close to the original while getting the bonus of the modern articulation. Now, honestly, this one I feel like is a little too close to the vintage counterpart in terms of the paint application department. Would have loved a little bit more there, but again, it looks like we're gonna get that with the PowerCon exclusive set, even though it is a way more expensive price than the uh, mass retail price on these. Uh, but still, I think the figure overall looks really good when standing next to the vintage man at arms. Overall, I'm really happy with this figure. I love the colors here. Unlike the Beast Man, where the armor, the accessories, had a little bit more of a subdued coloring to it, I really like the coloring here on the Man at Arms accessories. And I also just love that very bright green look of this figure. It really pops on a shelf and looks great with the other Masters of the Universe Origins figures. Coming in under $15 and not having any major QC issues with this Man at Arms, I'm gonna definitely give this figure the Geek Dad Life Buy rating. What are your thoughts on this Man at Arms from the Masters of the Universe Origins toy line? Do you agree or disagree with my assessments? I'll be happy to talk about it in the comment section below. Definitely check out my other reviews from the Masters of the Universe Origins series. I've already done He-Man, Skeletor, Tila, Beastman, and Battle Cat. And coming up, I've got a review of Evil Lynn and the Prince Adam and Sky Sled 2 pack. You can watch the rest of these reviews by clicking on this link right here that'll take you to my playlist featuring all of my Masters of the Universe Origins figure reviews. Be sure to hit that like button and until next time, hasta luego and goodbye.